They say winning ain't everything. Well, we don't have them tight conversations over here, man. Had that conversation with the losers. We trying to win at everything we do. Even in the loss, we don't see defeat. We see a lesson learned. Straight up. Look, I came into this world in 1978. The doc looked me in my face and knew I was something great. 45, 42 Prescott, that's where I'm from. Grew up in the slums around dope dealers and bums. As humble as I was, I adapted to my habitat. In my own lane, no. Far from where they crashing that dumb bar graduate. The game out of mass it. Served in the Navy, look. Y'all don't know the half of it. Pops passing no one. Moms passed last year. I know they up in heaven smiling down, crying mad tears. Cause they saw I'm making it. No telling why I'm taking it. My city been cursed, but I feel that I'm breaking it. Coached at Wayne High in 15 in one state. Seen the fork in the road and went straight. I know what I'm worth, I'm OG King Kirk, Brooklyn Nets gaming crew legend, let's work. Hey, this is OG King Kirk, your host of the OG Two Cents Podcast. want to thank each and every one of you who tune in every Sunday. We truly appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Uh, all links uh, available for every available streaming platform is available in the description. Uh, let's continue to stand up against any form of social injustice and racism. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Zenny Blocks. Make sure to armor your eyes with Zenny Blocks Virtual Clear Blue Blockers. It's important to protect your eyes from the harmful blue lights from your digital screens. So you'll have less eye strain and that makes for better sleep and performance. Check them out at zenny.com slash gaming or follow them at Zenny Gaming on Twitter and Instagram. This episode is episode 37. Off the court with Reg, uh, Reginald Nash from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, he's a professional NBA 2K player for Bucks GG. Was drafted number 12 overall. Uh, he was fifth in, in the league in scoring at over 32 points a game. Second in assist with almost 10 at 9.8. Uh, he was our rookie of the year as well. Um, all NBA 2K league performer, second team, uh, all rookie team. Uh, he led Bucks GG to the playoffs uh, for, I believe, the first time. Uh, you know, I don't like to get to do too much talking. Yes, uh, so, with further ado, Reg, how you doing tonight, man? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you for having me. How you doing? Uh, I'm great, man. I'm not used to having somebody uh, that has a, a deeper voice as mine <laughs> on there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, you know, this is um, rather unique for me. You know, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but I, I got my first in. Uh, in the 2K League with Bucks GG, uh, me and Tawan, uh, we helped draft their first, their their team the very first season, and uh, then after that, uh, he went on the the Mavs GG, and I went on the to Nets GC. So um, yeah, this is uh, kind of relative a little bit. <laughs> That's lit. That's lit. I didn't know that. Yeah, but you've you've taken them to new heights, <laughs> and uh, let's get into that. Um, just you know, some people know your story, some people mm -hmm. don't. Uh, just tell us how you got to where you are today. Well, it all started. I start, first started playing 2K in 2K15, but I didn't really know about Pro Am until like 2K, I'll say after draft 19. That's when I started like playing, like like taking it serious because that's that's when I know about the league. I didn't know about the league season one. I barely know about it season two. So like from the league playing season two and then from me playing post draft, I learned more and more about it. Like, you know as I got com uh, comfortable with the community. So then I was like, hey, maybe I should try out for this. And a lot of my teammates were telling me, go for it. Like I got the skill set. So all I did was lock in. You know, I had college and then I had uh, to play 2K. So I had to choose. Like I knew if I was going for far in 2K, that it was going to limit me from going to college. So I had to make a choice for myself. And then my mom, she believed in me. And she just told me to stick with it. And then. I stuck with it and now I'm, now I'm here. And, you know, just kind of going back from uh, draft night all the way leading up until your, you know, official rookie season, um, what, did, what, what was the feelings uh, at draft night going into it? Well, I mean, the feeling was, it was surreal because, like, I never got actually drafted before. So, you know, me going in there, I didn't know where I was uh, falling to. You know, there's a lot of rumors all around. Oh, you going to go there. They say they want you. I just try. I wasn't trying to get into all that. I was just trying to figure out where I was gonna go. 
And I knew my name was going to be called sooner or later. In the, well, first I thought it was going to be top three, but you know, it didn't happen like that. So I was like, all right, well, this is about to be a story. <laughs> and, you know, teams, <laughs> teams just kept going and going and I didn't hear my name called. I'm like, wow. But I'm like, I know if I, I know if I land by Milwaukee, I have a high chance going there because I know Drake and Plondo, they wanted me. We've been talking for a while. So I was like, maybe, maybe I got lucky. And next thing you know, Milwaukee pick was up. And then Drake was behind me. He was like, yo, you're coming. I was like, oh, man, this is no, no way. So then, like, they picked me, and then I just got happy. I was real happy because I knew I was at a safe spot. I knew what I had to do coming in there, and I played my part. And then we didn't end how we wanted to, but we got to the playoffs for the first time. So that's a start. Got you. Now, I mean, obviously, you, you grew up in Brooklyn, New York, correct? Yeah. Now, from Brooklyn uh, – to Milwaukee, uh, what was you know what was that like? Well, at first, if I'm gonna be real, I thought Milwaukee was like all like you know farms and all that. Cause you know, I'm from New York, I'm a kid from New York, so going to Wisconsin, you don't know what to expect. I never seen, never really heard about Wisconsin. So when I got there, it was like I was like, oh, this is a nice little city. I didn't expect to see what I seen, and then uh, Drake was showing, well, A. Rooks was showing me around. He was showing me what it's like to live in Milwaukee, and I was like. Did, it's, it's sort of like New York, but just less people. And, like, it's way more interactive. You know, people in people in the city don't really like talking to each other, but people out there, like, they, they know each other, so they all just be talking. So I was like, I can get used to this. It's calm. It's not as packed as New York. But it's, it's definitely a nice experience out there. Okay. Now, being a rookie, um, you get to you play with uh, some veterans and, and a rooks and – and Plondo, and like you say, you pretty much knew what you had to do going in. But how 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 did that help you uh, in your rookie year? Well, uh, first, I knew going in there, I knew I had a specific job to do. They needed a point guard, so I know I needed to be that point guard and that lead on the floor. So I knew Drake is gonna he's gonna do what he does best, and Plondo is gonna help me make himself better and myself better at the same time. So I knew going in, I just had to. I had to find a medium between all, because we're all high volume scorers. So I had to find a medium between all of us sharing a, a ball well and getting them involved as well as making sure I'm involved. And then I knew if I could do that, I knew we could go far. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. You now, I, like I mentioned, rookie of the year, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like, this was a phenomenal rookie class. So I think for anybody uh, to be able to walk away with the Rookie of the Year award, it speaks volumes uh, in, in their game. I mean, this, like I said, this rookie class, I think, was uh, the most impactful all the way around the board. I mean, it's, you know, it gave, you know some people will argue, uh, you know, last year, but I think it, this rookie class impacted way more teams than, than, uh, than last season. I mean, so uh, just walk us through your feeling, uh, you know, you, you capture rookie of the year amongst this talented uh, draft class. Uh, what what was your feelings on that? Well, I knew I had a battle, you know, between a lot of – there's like a lot of good point guards I got drafted this year. So I knew coming in I had to, you know, try to stand out and do what I do best. And I wasn't aiming for rookie of the year, but since when I knew I was on track, then I was like, you know, let me just keep it up and just keep doing what I'm doing. And then I got better as the weeks went by. And then next thing you know, they was like, your top three uh, candidate for rookie of the year. And I was like, that, that's pretty amazing, knowing that this class is pretty strong and high volume at the same time. So I just tried not to, like, aim for it, though, but it happened, and it worked in my favor. So I, I'm definitely appreciative for it. And I, I really thank the people around me that made me better. And without them, I don't think I could have got it. Hey, man, you played your ass off, man. So, I mean, you know, you, you earned it, man. You know, what are some things that separate you from other uh, point guards in the NBA 2K League? Well, I think my high volume scoring is something that separates me, but then also my passing and the way I get my teammates involved. Because people know uh, A-Rooks as a dominant sharp last year. Like, he had the ball in his hand most of the time. So they were trying to figure out. I know people are trying to figure out how are they going to mix Reg with Drake and then at the same time work Polano involved. And I just knew I had to do what – I, I knew what needed to be done, and I studied both of their games, and I learned how to get both of them involved. Because at first, it wasn't easy. I'm not going to say, like, we just jumped into it. You know, at first, we jumped into it. We had a little scruffs, but we worked it out, though, as a team. 
And then I was like, all right, let me, you know, make sure Drake is involved at the same time, making myself a threat and make sure Pondo's a threat. So I found the medium between all three of us. And then we, you know, we, we lost, we lost in the playoffs, but like, I feel like coming in this year is going to be a way better performance because now we're comfortable with each other. And I think, I think it's going to be a, a good season this year. Now, you know, you're the point guard. Uh, it's the, always one of the, it's like quarter, it's like the quarterback. Uh, a lot of people look for uh, leadership and everything like that. How, how does Reg lead? Like, what does your leadership look like? Oh, well, scrims, I tell them just practice how they will play. Like, I try to take everything serious. Like, I'm not a sole loser, but, like, I, I just don't like losing because I don't like letting another team feel like they got the upper hand on me, no matter what it is. So I just try to install that in between them. But, like, everybody's different, though, so there's different ways you got to approach your teammates. So, like, maybe I could talk to a one way, but I can't talk to Pano the same way. So once you, once you find out how to talk to your teammates and how to motivate them, then you'll be a leader because you'll get the best out of them. And they'll, they'll trust you to let them play their game as long as you're playing your game at the same time. So once everybody on the court is comfortable, then that's just a hard team to beat. Gotcha. Now, what are, what are some things that people don't know about Reg that they should know? I got to give out the sauce. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, well, what, what don't they know? Well, people probably don't know how much hours I put into my, my craft and what I do, how much film I watch on myself, how much film I watch on other guards, and, you know, just playing the game a lot. I surround myself with a lot of, like, what I practice that I surround myself with. So, like, if I'm on the game a lot, I would like to have one screen on the game and another screen on, like, what I did my last game in the league, what can I work on, what's my weaknesses. I like to aim on my weaknesses more because – that'll make me stronger rather than working on what I'm already strong at. Okay. Now, obviously we're in the off season. Um, and you know, I, I see you out here grinding and, and, and putting in the work, but beyond just playing the game, what, what is Reg doing in, in his off time? Well, I mean, I don't really do, I don't really do much. I'd be in the house all day, just chilling here with my mom. Cause I haven't been here for six months. I may, I may take, take my girl out to eat. Make sure what I'm saying there, but other than that, I just be I just be chilling. I don't really get into much. Yeah, I seen you put out the tweet uh, the other day that you was uh kind of missing the meal a little bit, kind of <laughs> missing Milwaukee a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I definitely, yeah, I definitely miss Milwaukee. It's it's cool out there. I I, I liked it. I got to Uber Eats every day. It was cheap. Not like New York. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> right. This is way better out there. Got you. You loving that Midwest vibe? Yeah, definitely was loving it. And now, NBA two K twenty one. You know, people had their feelings about it, and when it first came out, obviously we coming to an end and uh, look, waiting on next gen. But what mm -hmm. what are your thoughts about NBA two K twenty one? I mean, I like the game. Every game is different in a way. Like dribbling is not the same, so you know you got to work on that. You got to work on different moves, different mo – got to get used to the movement. But I don't really think – like, I'm trying to – I'm not trying to go hard in this gen because I don't know if next gen is the same. But I'm still trying to be at the top just in case it is the same. So, I like, I already know what I'm doing. But right now I'm just, like, trying to figure out how to balance, like, me being good now and then me being good next gen. Okay. Now, this is kind of like a dual question. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we, you know, everybody, I, you know, in this rookie class played – uh, and, uh, during the pandemic, uh, remote yeah. remote play, obviously not what you was looking forward to in becoming a part of the 2K League. But mm -hmm. talk about that and then talk about your expectations in season four. Well, I mean, this year I didn't – without the uh, uh, corona and stuff going on, you know, I thought I was going to be flying to New York, you know, flying to Vegas, you know, all the, all the – take all the nice little trips the league took you know, get to experience a new life out there and how it is to be like a NBA 2K League player, like on the move. But the, at the same time, the, the, what do you call it? The cross, whatever we played. Um, it, it was, it was nice to play that. Get still, you still get to experience the life in another state that you've never been in. So I just, it was cool at the same time. I got to do both. I got to see the arena. I got to, 
walk around, tour Milwaukee. Got to take a a resort with the team out in Milwaukee, someplace that I haven't heard of. And that was a nice experience. Took me to a nice little spot, different foods out there. So at the same time, it was still cool because you still lived the 2K life, but you just get, didn't get to live the, the whole life, like traveling in New York every week, being tired, you know, all that. All that stuff was good, but at the same time, you still made it at the end of the day, so you got to be happy. Right. Now, season four, you know, uh, we get to we get back to normal and get on. What what is Reg gonna be like on the stage? I'm I'm locked in. You know, sometimes it, it got to be one of those days because it might be some days I just want the job to be over with, and then it just might be one of them days I just gotta talk my gotta talk my stuff to you. So it's like it's off and on. But if this, if the team yelling, I'm gonna yell back too. So and no, nobody's gonna be able to rattle me because I'm I'm always gonna be locked in. So you like you could talk you can talk, but like you slip up one time, then I'm on you. So. <laughs> You just got to back up what you're preaching. Now, just uh, dating back from uh, this past season, what were some of your uh, most memorable games and uh, some of the favorite opponents that you played against? Well, I like I like playing against, like, the, the hype matchups. So, you know, or, or, like, when our season was on the line and we had a whole West Coast gauntlet we had to go through playing on West Coast, uh, you know, hitting the game winners on Kings, in the game winners on the Jazz, two top teams, just to prove to people that we like, you know, we, we can be up there. We just had a rough patch in the beginning of the year, so we didn't really know our identity. But then playing against other guys like, you know, uh who's some poor guys, like Duck, New York, you know, some of my friends. It's always nice playing them, the Lakers who attack, you know. Uh the the game winner that you guys hit on us. It still stuns me to this day. So, you know, all, all that is just a fun experience. I hate to lose, but at the end of the day, it's just all about having fun. Yeah, I'll tell you this, like the OG man, I hey, I, I hate to lose, man. Like I, I don't I, I, I know I come off most of the time to people as like emotionless. Like I don't mm. really like, but man, I, I hate to lose. I mean that I, I just uh you know, as I got older, I I kind I, I try to soothe how I lose. I mean, because mm. I, you know, as you get older, you got to, you got to worry about your blood pressure, and then you got to worry about a lot of different things that <laughs> that you don't have to worry about right now. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 when I was young, man, I was a sore loser, bro. Like, I'm yeah. telling you, like Me to too. the core, to the I, core. I hate losing more than I love winning. Like I just, I just hate losing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> just not in me. Like, I, I can't. I don't know how people just sit there and go, like, all right, we get a next. No. Like, <laughs> they got to feel my anger. <laughs> like, because they just beat me. So, like, uh, other than that, I I, I can't. <laughs> got you. Now, at this uh, portion of the show, uh, it's, it's OG wants to know. Uh, it's rapid mm -hmm. fire questions. Uh, answer open, honestly, as possible. Uh, you can decline if if need be. But it's just uh, just fun. Just uh, this question's uh, just so people get to know more about Reg. Um, biggest influence? Biggest influence is my aunt and my mom, because I grew up around them the most. They were successful, and all they wanted me was to be successful. So that's, I just know I had to push myself for them, too, and now I got them happy. Yeah, so what motivates you? What motivates me is losing, when I lost my grandma, that really pushed me to a whole nother level made sure I, like, I had to do what I had to do because that was my best friend. So like losing her, really, it really sunk me. But then I, I used my anger to motivate me instead of using it in a violence way. Got you. Um, favorite video game of all time? Of all time, got to be 2K. Okay. Favorite <laughs> sports team? Basketball is the Warriors. Football is the Steelers. Got you. Uh, favorite athlete? Steph Curry. Uh, favorite actor and actress. Favorite actor is favorite actor. I say is Paul Walker. Favorite. Favorite. What was the other question? Actress. I don't. I don't have one. I don't have one. Celebrity crush. <laughs> uh, I want to say. Nah, I ain't got one. <laughs> 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 Hey, your girl, your girl must go and listen to this, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, fa favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie is uh, Fast and Furious series. Okay. Yeah. Where do you Where do you see yourself in the next ten years? 
see myself in Hawaii on an island on vacation with my family after after winning five league championships. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what advice would you give uh, to any any to people who are aspiring to become a two K professional? Just keep pushing. Um, you know, make friends, make connections, but make sure your game is sharp at the same time. Just try to stand out in the crowd. Don't be a follower, you know, stay loyal to yours. Uh, and just work on your game every day. Okay, man. Let's see. Um, now let people know um, how they can follow you on social media, uh, Twitch and things of that nature. Oh, I, I use the same app for all my social medias, like every single social media. So Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitch, Twitter is all Reggie Nash Jr. Okay. I try to keep it balanced so you can find me on all social media. So it's just Reggie Nash Jr. Nah, smart man, smart man. Uh, Reg, like I said, I wasn't going to hold you too long, man. I appreciate you stopping through. Um, yes, sir. You know, like I tell everybody, I'm a fan. Uh, when when you're not competing against me, I mean, <laughs> obviously, uh, but I, you know, like the way you, how you performed this past season, uh, look forward to, you know, to you continuing your success. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Um, I hope some people really uh, take heed to some things that you said and that can, you know, inspire them and, and push them in the right direction. Mm. And, um, you know, just so just truly uh, thank you for coming through, man. No, uh, appreciate you for having me, OG. It means okay. a lot. No doubt. Um, now, for everybody uh, listening, uh, make sure you keep up with the OG Two Cents podcast on iHeartRadio, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, for those who are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, the OG Two Cents okay. podcast. Uh, follow me on social media at OG King Kurt. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you can also go to www.ogkingkurt.com for everything OG King Kurt and the OG Two Cents podcast. Um, shout out to my team, Strider Visuals, Box Graphics, and Cy Evermore. Uh, remember, you can catch me on Esports Extra every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, starting at 7 p.m. And that's with host Larry Ridley, the crew Renee Montgomery, Kelly Wells Brinkley, Antonio Williams, Durban Rowell, and Kevin Mamouzet. Um, that's Esports Extra. Uh, you can watch us on Compete Forever, and that's Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. Um, make sure you tune in to next week's episode. And remember, if it makes sense, it's an OG Two Cents. OG out. Put this work in, fellas. And much, much, much love to the entire 2K community for always showing me love. Without y'all, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah.